Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. Real Estate Coaching Radio is the nation's number one daily radio show for realtors who demand authentic real-time coaching. Get ready for fluff-free, unfiltered, full-strength honesty about what's truly working to get you into action, helping others, and making money now in today's real estate market. Now to our hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Okay, we, here we are back. We're having some technical difficulties, but I think everything is back on track now. So listen, listeners, um, as we promised, we're going to be coming up with a lot of new added audio or podcasts for you to listen to. And all the pod- uh, podcasts we come up with and all the content we are producing for you is geared towards helping you where you are now, making, helping you make money and be of service to other people. My special guest today is a longtime friend of ours named Jim Sullivan, and Jim is one of the owners of a great company called AllTheLeads.com. Um, I want you guys all to write that down, but I, I've actually made it easy for you to actually do business with Jim or at least look into what he's doing. As you know, we very, very rarely endorse any third-party companies. That, I mean, can listeners, can you think of the last time we did that? The reason I always feel comfortable suggesting people use uh, AllTheLeads.com is because they do a fantastic job providing not just probate leads, which a lot of you need to be learning about, but also to have a complete system for chasing probate leads. Sitting at home right now in quarantine and what comes after uh, this during whatever is going to happen after this you know, plague leaves our land, then after that you're going to still want to be doing probate because probate is one of the simplest, easiest, least. In probate world, there's not a lot of competition because not a lot of agents know about it. So what you're going to want to do is you need to text the word alltheleads.com. I'm sorry, all the leads with no spaces, all the leads, and just text that to 31996. And when you do, we're going to send you um, a link where you can learn about alltheleads.com. And also, there's some special discounts on there for our podcast listeners. So, Jim, without any further delay, welcome to the podcast, and thanks for your patience. Thank you so much. After that introduction, my work is done. What, what more do I need to say? Thank you so much. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's funny. I always, I always like grind myself when things don't go perfectly on our podcast, but I have to remember <laughs> – that the, the podcast listeners really don't care, <laughs> and and yep. like we're having to do this, we're having to do this podcast on our cell phones just because we're this is an on the fly kind of thing, and you know no time no time to set it up in our studio, but such is the way it's urgent, and they need to know about what you offer because it really is the perfect product, uh, it's the perfect thing for all these guys to be doing in this market. So you can let's just start out with the basics because not a lot of them know what probate leads are, and uh, tell them how you know just tell them about the industry, tell them about. Um, how they can get involved with your company. Yeah, what, what's so unique, Tim? You and I have known each other for 15-plus years. We were, I was a realtor, or I have been a realtor for 45 years and an investor for about 40. And what made me start this company in my real estate and investing career, probate always were the easiest deals. You're dealing with usually motivated absentee owners, you know, you've got very little competition compared to FISBOs and expireds. And for the heirs, it's found money. So they're usually very willing to sell, and they very rarely want top dollar. It could not be any different than FISBOs and expireds. And long story short, Tim, we give, we give you about 30 col- 32 columns of data, but the information you're going to use is the name and address of everybody in your market that inherited property in the last 30 days, we give you the name and address of the executor, which is usually the family member in charge, and then we give you three to five phone numbers, really accurate phone numbers for that person, so you can pick up the phone and call them. And then we give you all the attorney information, names, addresses, phone numbers, emails. But what's so exciting about it is our subscribers that follow our program, our recommended program is get the leads, send a letter, and then follow that letter up with a phone call. And where a lot of people fail is that third step. You know, there there are some markets that get a lot of investor competition. These people do get letters, but rarely does anybody else call them. So our agents that are willing to pick up that phone and follow that letter up with the phone call say it's it's really the easiest source that they've ever done. And really they're good opportunities for both realtors and investors. You know, very rarely, like I said, do the people want top dollar. So well, let's you know, other- Jim, the mistake we're making, the mistake we're making is not telling them what a probate lead is, right? Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Yeah. So well, let's, first let's break it down to the very basic. What's probate? Yeah. 
first there were the dinosaurs and that that, that old movie airplane. Um, yeah. Probate is, probate is when someone dies and. The misconception a lot of people have is that you only need to do, do probate if you didn't have a will, and that's not accurate. Really, probate is if, if you have a will, it's testate. So probate is just a way to uh, pass title from a deceased person to a living one, and it's it's just as much about about debt as it is, is assets. The courts just make sure that the debts of the estate are paid and that the rightful heirs end up with title. So and and there's two kinds. If there's a, a will, it's relatively simple. It's a uh, testate. If there is no will, then a court gets somewhat involved, but it's still relatively simple. You know, they'll appoint an executor, which is either an attorney or a family member, and it's just a process by which, obviously, someone who's deceased can't deed the property over. So it's a process by which title is transferred from a deceased person to a living one. And the reason that – and, guys, listen, if you want to learn more about all the leads, just uh, text the word all the leads, no spaces, just text all the leads to 31996, and we'll text you back um, a link, and you can go to Jim's website. You basically can understand the rest of it, and there's a special offer for you guys as well. This is something that all of you need to be considering in this marketplace if you're not listening to what he's saying. This is work you can do sitting in front of your computer. This is the reason I like it so much for so many of you. You don't have to you know, violate any kind of laws or rules about showing property or even leaving your house. You can do most of this sitting at your desk. And we've known, we have a coaching clients that basically have probate as one of their primary spokes, and they don't have to leave their houses. And you know, you know, it's a great source of income. Now, here's the thing that's also interesting about this is a lot of times – well, Jen, this is your expertise. I don't want to – you know, to act like I really am an expert at this because I'm not. But a lot of sure. times the, the people that you're going to be calling, they don't have any local real estate agent contacts. Can you tell the listeners about that? Yeah, just just give you an example. I live in South Florida. When I had this idea, I tried it in my market. In four months, I took 14 listings, and I bought and flipped two properties, and I went on a total of one face-to-face appointment. There was only one person that was local. Now, some areas, you know, it's – you may have 10, 20, 30% of the areas are local, but hey, for the, Tim, your phone, your, your phone is flicking in and out a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me good, Tim? <laughs> That's not, I can hear you. Yeah, I'm on a, the listeners, you guys I'm on a, I'm on a, yeah, I'm on a okay. landline. So sorry about that. Um, but yeah, the vast majority of the time you're going to be reaching out to the oldest child, the most trusted family member who is another part of the country, a thousand miles away. This kind of got dumped on them. They have a life of their own. They probably have a sibling or two that are looking at them to get this property sold so they can split the proceeds. And, you know, they're usually really glad to hear from somebody that could help them. They don't – I always tell even newer agents, you know, you're, you're on equal footing with the most expensive person. That I mean, the most experienced agent that has signs all over town because the air isn't local. They don't know you from any other agent out there. They just know you're reaching out to try to help them. And that's what we've discovered from a lot of our coaching clients, basically. And, and guys, this is a spoke, and depending on your market, without sounding, I don't know, a little macabre, it could be a really big spoke for you. The rest of you, this is just something else you can add to your business. Like in a market like this, we're going to be telling you guys different ways you can make money, basically, at home, uh, sitting in front of your computer, doing things that will require mostly over-the-phone work. And you heard Jim say one of the most key elements, the most important elements to making this work for you is you picking up the phone. And, Jim, it doesn't surprise me whatsoever that most agents won't pick up the phone, so all they <laughs> want to do is mail the letters, right? Same yep. way with expires and for sale by owners. They want to just essentially avoid the real work. But the nice thing about your product is they actually – you have the letters pre-written, but you also tell them what to say when calling um, you know, the, the folks you give them the contact information for. So you've got really a refined system. Is there anything really agents need to do other than just become a member of your service? I mean, there's no missing elements, right? There really isn't. When you get any leads from us, we have three 20-minute training videos that kind of walk you through the program step by step. Um, but no, just get the leads, send a letter, follow up with a phone call. The, the conversation's a little bit different than Pisbos or Expired. So we, what we really teach Tim is provide value first. You know, keep in mind you're reaching out to someone that three or four months ago lost a loved one. You want to start off with, you know, I know it's a tough time for the family, and there's a lot of different ways I can help you. You know, I've got investors, estate sale companies, clean-out crews, contractors, and I'm a great realtor. 
you know, how can I help you? You, you want to be like a turnkey solution for this person rather than just going straight to the real estate conversation, which you would more normally do with a, with a FISBO or an expired. Well, that makes perfect sense. And so for those of you who are thinking that this is kind of a not necessarily savory way to get business, I understand that these sellers definitely need, in most cases, they desperately want to sell these houses. They're out of state. They have no local contacts to get the house prepped for market. They have no local contacts, obviously, for real estate agents in many cases. And so when you call these guys up, if you use Jim's approach, they're going to, have, they're going to be very receptive to what you have to say. Now, not all, it's been my observation from some of our coaching clients that are uh, clients of yours that what generally speaking, they'll have a whole, maybe 20 or 30 different irons in the fire conversations going on simultaneously. And when they get up to that number, they get a pretty consistent number of listings every single month. Do you, have you ever studied that, the formula, basically how it works in terms of leads to conversions, or is it really dependent on the agent's skill on the phone? It depends on the agent, and it also depends on the market. And I'll just give you the two extremes, Tim. We, we have – a subscriber in New York City that gets uh, 300 leads a month and does two or three deals. He, he earned over a million dollars in commissions last year. And then we have a guy in rural Arkansas that gets 15 leads and does two or three deals. <laughs> so it, it, it's interesting. The more competitive markets, your conversion rate is going to be a bit lower, but generally your commissions are going to be higher. Um, and it, just another thing that you didn't ask about, these leads season extremely well. Uh, there's – about half of them are ready to do something right now, but if you follow the program, send that letter out, you'll, as much as you do want to follow up with a phone call and you want to keep calling them, uh, every week on our mastermind call, we have agents tell us that I got a call or I got to come get me listing on a letter I sent out a year ago. So unlike a lot of other lead sources, yeah, exactly. Um, they don't expire as quickly as other lead sources like Fizbo's and expired. They're still, they're still business there months and even years later. So walk me through just from like you can pick whatever state you feel comfortable giving an example of because I know states have different laws with regards to this or processes anyway, or maybe even sure. speed to complete the process. So somebody passes away, the house is now in, in probate basically. So at what point like is the house sellable? Can you just walk us through, just give us some education sure. on the process? Sure. And it's it's surprisingly similar. Uh, there's California has a little bit more regulation than some areas, but most vast majority of the states are very similar. On The property doesn't automatically go into probate, Tim. When someone passes away, nothing happens until the family takes some action. The family has to file the probate, and they can either hire an attorney to do it or they can do it pro se, which means they go down to the courthouse and file the probate. One thing we do know, on average, it's about three to four months from the date of death until the family hires an attorney. Once they hire the attorney, they're usually past the grief enough that they've made the business decision that they need to sell this property and, you know, everybody move on with their lives. And that's the point where we get the lead, where the family has filed the probate. At that point, 95% of the time they have their letters of testamentary. They're authorized to list the property. They can sign contracts. They can sell the personal property. They, they typically, from the time the attorney starts working on it, it can be anywhere from two to six months. The average is probably, again, three to four months until the attorney is finished uh, with the probate and you can actually close. Now, there are exceptions in virtually every state. You can close sooner. You know, the money just goes into escrow, the agent gets paid, and the family just doesn't get the funds dispersed until, until the probate's completed. So... Best examples of agents who are the most successful at doing this. Can you give us some, like, profiles? What would be the, the qualities and characteristics of to be successful at this? I'll, I'll pick the easy one, right? It would be you know, beneficial if you live in an area of the country, like, say, for example, certain parts of Florida, where there would be hypothetically a lot of opportunity for probate. And, again, I know this guy sounds a little grisly, but just keeping in mind that in this marketplace, you guys have to say yes to everything. That's one of the rules we're coming out with in our new guide. You say no to nothing, yes to everything. You have to do anything and everything possible to help people through this. And if somebody's out of state and they have somebody pass away three or four months later, Jim's telling us that they're going to be ready to sell that property. Well, that sounds to me like that's a perfect listing. That's a listing that the seller's motivated. You're not going to have anybody that has necessarily any attach, emotional attachment to the property. They're going to be willing to price it right. Um, and you just heard Jim say a lot of times investors are the ones that are purchasing this. Or, by the way, 
agents listening, you can purchase these yourself. I mean, Jim got started on this by, you know, purchasing these, uh, this information for the sake of his building his own portfolio, which he has hundreds of homes himself. But Jim, with regards to um, best practices, can you give us some characteristics and qualities of people who do really great at this? Yeah, and, and good point, Tim. We have a lot of agents that are also investors, and what we always tell them is don't wear either hat. Come at it that instead of, you know, I'm Tim the realtor, I'm Tim the investor, you know, I specialize in helping people that have inherited property. There's a lot of different ways I can help you. You know, what's been the most difficult? Just ask good questions. What's been the most difficult part of this for you so far? And to give you an example, it's pretty consistent nationwide that 10 to 15% of these have a compelling urgency. You know, mom died. we got to get dad in the nursing home. We need to sell right away. Um, the two most profitable flips I ever did, um, one of them, by the time the father died, he was three years behind in the payments, and the foreclosure sale was scheduled in three weeks, and the family didn't have any money. Uh, pretty, pretty high motivation. I actually had to hire, get my own attorney to go in there and stop the sale, but I made a huge profit on it. I, I had another one that was free and clear that I made as much on, but there were 12 heirs, and by the time they split up the money, I think by the time they called me, they had all already spent it. So, honestly, the, characteristic, the characteristics of the most successful people are the ones that go into it with an open mind and really have empathy for the people. Um, you know, really, and I, I'll give you an extreme example. We had a guy in central Florida that called an elderly couple in Michigan, and they said, boy, your timing is great because we've got a contract in front of us from an investor we're about to sign for $90,000. And this guy was a realtor and an investor. He listed the property for two ten and sold it for two thirty in ten days. So oh my he, gosh. He, did the, he he did the right thing when somebody else was literally ready to rape these people. And I and I said to him, I said, Bob, did, were you ever tempted to buy it yourself? And he said, No, not not for a second. It just wouldn't have been the right thing to do. So um, that's awesome. And, and, yeah, I mean, we've got a ton of stories like that. If you are an investor, I've found the best way to earn their trust is to be honest with them. You know, don't tell them that the property is worth a lot less than it is. Uh, I've had so many people tell me, you know, I, I'll tell them, you know, in great shape it might be worth 300000 Honestly, in today's market, I'd have to buy it for about 230 240 and they'll call me back a few days later and say every other investor told me it was worth 180 So, you know, if, if the motivation is there, they're not going to list it. And if it isn't, they're probably not going to take an investor offer. And if you just ask them good questions, which we teach you to do, you'll know pretty quickly which way the, you know, which way the transaction is going to go. So, listeners, here's all you have to do. Just text the, the word, all the leads. There's, that's it. Just all the leads and just text it to 31996. And we're going to text, we'll text you back a link to their website that they made for us, which explains the whole process in detail. And then I guess you have limited territories per area, right? I noticed on that website, they, you don't just take everybody, or am I wrong about that? How's that work? Yeah, we, we limit it depending on the number of leads and the demographics. We limit, limit it to three to five agents or investors per market. There, there's very few. There's 3,240 counties nationwide, so, and, you know, there, there's very few areas that are sold out. And if they are sold out, we'll put you on a wait list and – I mean, Tim, you know realtors, they come and go. So <laughs> usually usually you're not on the wait list too too long, you know, but but most areas are wide open right now. There's a real good chance wherever you're at that there's probably at least a spot or two left. And in this market cycle, Jim, and you and I have been through a couple of these now, at this is the type of thing that first come, first serve, right? You guys want to definitely get on this yep. early. Don't just wait. Um, you know, check it out, see if it's for you. This is a spoke, listeners, and those of you guys who have been tuned into Julie and I for a long time, you understand your goal is to ultimately have seven spokes of income that are, you know, seven lead generators that are coming in that are producing, obviously, income for you. And the, the nature of the leads that you're getting from Jim are perfect because they're the very definition of motivated seller. Um, this is what all of you guys are hoping and praying for, that you find motivated sellers. And this is how you do it. When you see somebody get a listing in your neighborhood and you're going, how did that guy get that listing? That's probably, he's probably chasing probate leads. When you drive through neighborhoods where uh, there's going to be a lot of probate and you see one or two dominant agents, they're probably because they're working probate. This is a niche that many of you have never heard of before. 
And when you kind of move past the aspect of what you're actually doing in terms of uh, essentially working with grieving families, and Jim said it, after three or four months, these guys have generally speaking, they're focused on getting the property sold. And really, they have to get the property sold unless they're going to rent it. Otherwise, the property is just going to get, you know, essentially it's going to go to the you know wold. So this is a absolute motivated have to sell seller and you're helping them solve a problem. I love just basically everything about it. Um, and I also love the fact that generally speaking, your guys' primary competitors are going to be other, they're going to be investors mostly, I would think, because not very Correct. many agents are going to be organized enough to take on this approach. And if you, so, so Jim, that's actually, I was thinking about that question. So you teach these guys when they approach a family about selling an inherited property, you know, that's in probate, you teach them to give them different scenarios, the seller different scenarios, or do you just, always, you know, do they always go for the listing or like, should the agent, if they're not an investor themselves, should they have like an investor in their back pocket or is, what do you advise? Yeah, we, we teach them to ask good questions so they can find out what is the best thing for that seller. Um, you know, it, sometimes sellers have a misconception of how long it's going to take to sell and they're willing to sell at a deep discount when they, really don't need to. So if you ask good questions and understand their situation, you're going to know pretty quickly. If there's, if there's a strong motivation, they're not going to list. If there isn't, you know, they're probably not going to take a 30% discount. So ask them good questions. Give them options. Now, yep. you, you, sometimes you don't even need to give them all their options because, like my scenario, if they say, well, it's scheduled for foreclosure in three weeks, well, listing is not an option. <laughs> you know, if the if the property's free and clear, the, you could tell that the family's not in dire straits. Well, they're not going to take a thirty percent discount. So, you ask good questions, and that kind of tells you the best course of action. But we always recommend that realtors have an investor, and investors have a realtor. And we always tell investors, you know, the ones that you don't buy, refer it to a good local agent. And uh, because I will tell you that sometimes the family. You know, there's there's four or five errors. They don't think they're in a big hurry, and then all of a sudden the bills keep coming in every month. You know, they'll list the property if it hasn't sold in a few months. They get a lot more motivated. So, you know, That's right. if, if yeah, you you want to have a real an investor in your pocket if you need them, and if you're an investor, you want to have a realtor that can help the people that you can't help. You know, it's really true. And if, if you're one, go ahead. Yeah. No, one area where the two can work like, together. When you're with a company like EXP, EXP has its own iBuyer, so you could always have that be your institutional investor. So listen, Perfect. Jim, I've actually got to get to another. I've got to get to another podcast. So listeners, here's your homework from this, and we're going to be doing more sort of unstructured, on the spot, man on the street podcasts like this. This we're going to do everything in our power during this massive market shift to keep you guys, uh, frankly, helping people and making money. So your homework from today's um, Urgent Edition podcast is to text the word all the leads to 31996. Text the word all the leads to 31996. Do that now. Hey, Jim Sullivan, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Tim, it's an honor to be here. appreciate the opportunity, and I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Thank you, everyone. We will. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris, Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at... This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.